This month we have two algebra problems, four problem solving strategies. We're going to start right here. x squared plus 1 over x squared is 3, x is positive, we want x plus 1 over x. Now we could try to solve for x over here, but that's not much fun, and I don't like doing things that aren't much fun, so I'm going to leave that for you at home, but I warn you, not much fun. Fortunately, we don't need to find x, we need to find this thing over here, x plus 1 over x. Now we're not just going to solve that by staring at it, so first step when you're stuck on a problem is do something. And what we're going to do is problem solving strategy number one. We're going to relate what we want to what we know. What we want is this x plus 1 over x thing. What we know has an x squared and a 1 over x squared. So we can relate this to what we know by squaring this, because that'll give us an x squared and a 1 over x squared term. So we're going to square x plus 1 over x, and that's a job for the distributive property. We're going to square that out. We multiply the two x's, we get an x squared as planned. x times 1 over x, well, we get a 1. 1 over x times x, that gives us another 1. 1 over x times 1 over x, as planned again, we get another term in what we know, which is 1 over x squared, and we see what we know sitting right there. x squared plus 1 over x squared, that's 3. 3 plus 1 plus 1, add on those extra ones, we get 5. So the square of what we want is 5 x is positive, so what we want is positive, so we take the square root, and what we want is the square root of 5. Don't just stare. Do something. On to the next problem. Here we have a and b are positive integers. We're going to underline both those so we remember that they're positive and we remember that they're integers. Watch out for these sneaky words, such that 1 half plus 1 over a is 1 third plus 1 over b. We want the sum of all possible values of a. Well, we're not going to stare, we're going to do something. First thing we're going to do is get rid of those fractions. Multiply both sides by 6AB. That'll wipe out all the fractions. It'll leave us, see, we'll have 3AB plus 6B is 2AB plus 6A. All right, now let's bring everything over to this side. Subtract 2AB from both sides. We get a, B, subtract the 6A, we get minus 6A, we still have the 6B over here. All that equals zero. Now we're a little stuck. Um, Got to do something. We're going to do problem solving strategy number two. Solve for the variable you care about. We care about A, we're going to solve for A. So we're going to bring the 6B over there. I'm going to send it back over there because it doesn't have an A term. I'm going to factor A out of these first two terms a times b minus 6 equals negative 6b. Solving for a, we're going to divide both sides by b minus 6. a equals negative 6b divided by b minus 6. Eh, fractions again. But maybe this one's helpful. Let's see, I'll back up here to positive integers, where it's good that we underline this because we realize, well, b has to be positive, but if b is large, you know, say b is 1,000, the top here is negative, the bottom is positive, the quotient will be negative, but A has to be positive. In fact, if B is anything higher than 6, top is negative, bottom is positive, that makes A negative, that's no good. So B can't be higher than 6, it can't be 6 either, because that'll make the denominator 0 and no dividing by 0. So B, well, the only options are, since B has to be positive, are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Well, that's just 5. That's just 5 possibilities. We can just go ahead and check them. That's easy enough. So we'll check the five possibilities for b. Now if we put in b equals 1, the top is negative 6, the bottom is negative 5. That makes a a fraction. No good. a has to be an integer, so we're going to get rid of that one. Put in b is 2, the top is negative 12, the bottom is negative 4. That makes a equal to 3, and that makes sense. 1 half plus 1 third is 1 third plus 1 half. Put in b equals 3, we get negative 18 divided by negative 3. That is 6. 1 half plus 1 sixth is indeed 1 third plus 1 third. They're both 2 thirds. We put in 4, we get negative 24 divided by negative 2. That is 12. And sure enough, 1 half plus 1 twelfth is 1 third plus 1 quarter. You might have missed that one if you were guessing and checking. And you almost certainly would have missed the last one if you were just guessing and checking. We put 5 in here, we get negative 30 on top, negative 1 on the bottom. And it gives us a is 30. That would have been a tough one to find. These were the only possibilities for B, so these are the only possibilities for A. We add them up. 30 and 12 is 42, add 6 is 48, add 3 is 51. Now, I promised you four strategies, I've only given you two, but we finished our two problems. So what we're going to do to get those last two strategies is 
we're going to go after this problem again. But we're going to imagine what happens if I take away the word positive. Now the problem isn't very interesting if I take away the word integers. And you can think about it and see why it's not that interesting. But if I take away the word positive, this strategy gets a lot messier. Because now, well, I can't say b has to be less than 6. Now I could stick b equals 7 in there and I get negative 42 divided by 1. a is negative 42, b is 7. Stick it in there, try it, it works. Could put b equals 8 and I'm going to get an integer for a as well. And Yikes! And also b could be negative. Now if I put b equals negative 3 in there, top will be 18, the bottom will be negative 9 to make a negative 2. And both of these sides will be 0 and that's okay. Yikes! So what are we going to do? This strategy kind of falls apart when I take, apart, take away that positive. At least it gets a whole lot messier. So we're going to try something a little bit different. Bring us on to the rest of our, our other two strategies. Now we're going to start from after we'd brought everything over and we had a b. We had, let's see, what do we have? We had a b minus 6a plus 6b equals 0. Now, we wanted to get rid of this word positive. We still have the word integers. Now, an equation we want to solve in integers has a special name. It's called a Diophantine equation. And our problem solving strategy number three, you can often solve Diophantine equations by getting an expression, a factored expression equal to some integer, not just zero. You know, when you're doing quadratics, you get factored quadratic equal to zero. You can solve the problem here. Factored expression equals an integer. And we'll see why that's a good thing in just a minute. But how are we going to factor this? How are we going to factor this? Well, I can factor these first two terms. I can just take an a out of those first two terms. I have a times b minus 6 plus 6b equals 0. But now I'm kind of stumped. How do I factor this mess? You know, I can't, don't have anything to work with here. What I'd really like is a b minus 6 over here somewhere. You know, if I had a b minus 6 sitting over here, if I had a b minus 6 out here, and I still have my a times b minus 6, well, then I'd be golden. You know, I could factor out. If I had this, I could factor out the b minus 6, and we'd be good. But I don't have a b minus 6 over there. And I can't get just a b minus 6 because I had that 6 sitting there. I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to need a 6 somewhere, right? I'm going to need a 6 to be 6 times b. So, well, but then there's a 6 times this minus 6. I, I need a minus 36 from somewhere. Well, I can introduce it. I can just subtract 36 from both sides. If I subtract 36 from both sides, well now, now when I factor 6 out of these two terms, I get the b minus 6 that I want. And this is something. This is something I can factor. I can factor the b minus 6 out. Factor my b minus 6 out, and I'm left with the a plus 6 as my other factor a plus 6 times b minus 6 is negative 36. I factored. I have a factored expression equal to an integer. Now this kind of this trick we did here where we went from this expression up here to this nice pretty factored thing down here, this is called Simon's favorite factoring trick, which is really fun to say. Go ahead and try it. Yeah, it's fun to say. We have a product, linear term, linear term. We can often throw in a constant here so that we can factor. Now let's see why we care about factoring. That's Simon's favorite factoring trick. That's problem strat solving strategy number four right there. We have this factored expression equal to an integer. Well, this integer, since we know a and b are both integers, these two factors have to be integers. In other words, these two factors have to be two integers that multiply to negative 36. And now we can crank out our solutions. We just list all the pairs of integers that multiply to negative 36. For example, if we put negative 1 times 36, we can start our list over here. Well, we put in negative 7 for a. And we get 36. We put in, yikes, 42 for b. And give it a whirl. Stick in negative 7 and 42 up there. It works. We can also flip that around and call it 36 times negative 1. We get 36. So we have 30 for a. And 5 minus 6 is negative 1, 5 for b, and that's one of the solutions we found from before. And we can just keep going, crank them all out. Now, there are a lot of them, so I'm going to let you do that one at home. But we can see now, factored expression equal to an integer. We just use the, all the possible factorizations of the integer to crank out all of our solutions. So, quick review of our four strategies. 
Number one, relate what you want to what you know. Number two, solve for the variable you care about. Number three, Diophantine equation. We're solving for integers. Factor set equal to an integer. And number four, product, linear term, linear term. Simon's favorite factoring trick to get that factored form. But above all, don't just stare. Do something.